Hello, it's Chris, and this is my Amiga 2000, and it's time for another product review. This is my Amiga 2000. Inside of it is an RGB to HDMI, a compact flash boot solution with a rear slide-out mofo, and I think a terrible fire, something, 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 and an Ariana Grande Ethernet with a UI hookup. And it works well. This is something new. This is a Dicky Olga. Yep, funny name, interesting product. So, this is a 68030 accelerator card for the Amiga 2000. And it has many features. Now, I'm not an expert. I just got this. So we're going to go through this together and learn. So this has compact flash with a nice back slide out. The Amiga check mark in a nice mirrored finish. Some auto boot and 68,000 mode jumpers off or on. Dip switches, I mean. Two pull. Uh, so you have your compact flash. You have a 40 pin IDE. I don't know what that is. Something. Looks like JTAG headers, but... I don't know what these are for. Um, it does have a SATA connector here. I thought I was wrong, so serial ATA. <gasps> Flip her over to her backside. Always check out the backside of a girl. NVMe or 44 pin IDE. Awesome. 128 megs of RAM on this version. They come in many flavors, but this one is mine. 6830 at up to 60 megahertz, clocked at 50, and a 882 from Freescale at 40, but it has no crystal in it. I guess I can plop a 50 in there and we'll see how it rolls. The silk screen shows you what your magic is for different jumpers of speed 30, 40, 50, and 60. Everything is labeled as to what it is MMU on or off, cash on or off, BSW. If you don't have a 68,000 in your slot, you can jumper this and this. 68,000 mode will be disabled. The idea of a 68,000 mode is a lot of accelerators you have to take your 68,000 out because it's going to run off of this. With this, it has a jumper, so you can turn the 030 off and boot it into slow 68,000 mode if you need some major compatibility. It has power headers for various devices. It even comes with a little screw thing for your NVMe. Compact flash solution, IDE. Now it has a special device driver built into its little ROM called LIDE.device. So you have to make sure that you are using that in your hard drive toolbox, like SCSI underscore device underscore name equals LIDE.device built into the into this uh, yep. Whatever it is. I can't even read that small. I don't know what these are, these big pigs. It has a uh, key power, cable select, many different things. So we're going to open up this 2000 and see what it is. I don't even remember what's in here, honestly. I just have a couple Amigas, and I rotate and upgrade them all so much I forget what it is. It is on HDMI, I know that much, because I can press this button and get some stuff, so I know that it is HDMI. This is from 8-Bit Dreams on Amabay. I will link the link for the product in the description below. Uh, it says, time flies too fast, another two months have passed already. The Olga team was was not asleep this winter. Here's some news. Uh, standard and advanced, fat and fatter. So I have the fatter, there was one in purple, yes, I even inquired about the purple one. It was an early revision and it didn't have everything that I paid for. Uh, so, you know, that was the purple card. Matthias Heinrich, live to... Beta test by 8-Bit Dreams. Thanks to Gonzo, R4M from A1K.org. Free for non-commercial reproduction. 64 megs or 128 megs. This is version 1.6.2. This card is at the time when I'm filming this in 2024. Middle of the year. So how much did I pay for this card? It was pretty expensive. I paid $370 for this. $370? Are you an idiot? Good Lord, that's a lot of money. Uh, that's because I get screwed on the euro. It was only uh, 323 euro monies. So that was for the, the top dog. It comes in many flavors ranging from starting at like 200 bucks on up. I figured if you're going to go, you might as well go hard, right? Buy the fattest you can. Use MapROM to unleash the full speed. 
and it has a gitlab.com address on the card and flip IDE channels and all sorts of wild stuff. SATA, master, select, slave. There's so many options to hook up on here for storage. I think I'm going to go NVMe because I have one just laying around somewhere around this pile. So, my Amiga 2000. We're going to run a benchmark because why not? Do I have anything on here? Oh, it's got an emulator card in it. Great. Work. Did I put anything on here? Ah, the wonderful old Sysinfo. So this is an Amiga 2000 East, er, Standard Denise 68000. Now we're talking. We're at 713 dry stone per second. 0 0.74, we're at 102 because it's got a little bit of RAM installed. Like, yeah, I got 8 megs of RAM, stock nuts as it comes. I got a magnetic AUI connector for my Ethernets. Just kind of magnetics to the back and always falls off. Five screws to unlock the potential of this case. So on the back of this Amiga, I have the Aragonic Grande network card, I think. A SanDisk 4 gig something hopefully it's IDE I guess that'll be easier on me uh, my big massive button and HDMI on my 3d printed bracket in gray of the RGB to HDMI I left my fan really crusty for nostalgic effect so inside of this is a IDE from expansion systems data flyer which I'm going to take out Here's my hard drive light. So this is a data flyer IDE uh, board, and it has a dude on top. See these pins on top? Well, we can take this jumper out. Ouch. And this is an expansion systems 8 meg board with this thing. So if you wanted to save slots, when you take these two jumpers off, you can compress these two boards together as one and use one Zorro slot. Kind of neat. Now, for the Amiga 2000 on a CPU sock or a CPU bus install, it actually goes in one of these slots, usually the left one. So you have to remove this plate, two screws, and save your screws because you have to use them for the device that you're plugging in. There's your plate. Don't throw these away. Save them. I'm also going to take out this. IDE to compact flash adapter I have in here. It's just on a card. It's powered by a Berg and it's got a SanDisk Ultra. The cool thing is it's already built so I will uh, slide this right into the card when I put it in. I like how this is tapered so it can slide in like that. I see because it just fits because of those dip switches. Now this has a stock 68,000 in it so the 68,000 mode off or on, auto boot off or on. Once I put this screw back in here, with the screwdriver I dropped. Okay, so there we go with the Dicky Olga card in the, your compact flash card. I wrote on there, Amigo S3.1. We'll slide into device like so. And it's hard drive light is right here for hard drive one or hard drive two. I don't know which light goes on it, so we're going to try hard drive one as a test. It also has two clock ports on here too, so if you have a battery backed up clock solution that you're interested in, you can do that. You can see here my RGB to HDMI on a board that with a 3D printed bracket and a micro or a mini HDMI to a massive wrap around converter here to a HDMI short throw adapter dude plug-in thing. You like me, this is the very first time. Uh, no trickery, no magic. Let's just see what happens. It's going to blow up or work. We have all sorts of lights on this thing. Lights galore. It's doing nothing. There's the RGB HDMI. Okay. There's no hard drive light. I'm probably in something wrong. I 
I might have to do the card with a disc. Tonight's interrupter, while I wait for that, I'll just let that thing run for a minute. Oh boy. Tonight's interrupter is Mr. Folkert Degans. I'm risking interrupting a YouTube recording. Hope you don't mind. Not at all. It's what we're here for. I'm watching your 3000 UX video and I'm now on the blue binder part. What did that just do? Please, please, pretty please, could we receive high resolution scans of all those materials? I am a custodian of Amiga Unix. Yeah, Amiga Unix Dot com. We would love to put your materials up on the file directories. Wonderful. I will have to take them in the work to do the scanning. And also, Mr. Q, you said make a video about my 2500. What if I can't fix it? Just end it that way? I don't know. So they have a standard, advanced, fat, or fatter. So I bought the fatter dick. What the hell did you just say? It's called a Dicky Olga. A Commodore? <laughs> but with that interruption out of the way, this doesn't work. I'm going to take this card out, and it's just going to boot nothing. Uh, let's make sure auto boot is on. So auto boot is on. Off, on. 68,000 mode is off. And turn it on with nothing. Low, high, I'm on a double mouse button, wait for, uh, it's blinking, you can see the power light will blink when I hold both mouse buttons down. I'm waiting for the RGB to HDMI. Alright, so there we go, that works. Fine. Boot options, DF0, use, boot. 314, even better. Okay, forget what I have. It said 3-1. Maybe it had a 4 on there at one time. That HDMI signal looks wonderful. So here we go, booting. Boots right up. We are a 68030, 60 hertz, 3.14 memory, 128 megs of RAM detected, so it does detect the RAM. That's good. It just doesn't like this card. Because I don't want to blow this up, I'm going to grab another card, install 314. We're going to boot off of uh, DF2, use, and boot. So this is Dicky Olga with a new card in because it doesn't like this 4 gigabyte, which was perfect for Amiga OS, Sandus Ultra, 30 megabytes. Uh, your accelerator is equipped with a LIDE boot ROM. Is that a live boot ROM? Uh, so your hard drive toolbox will be named LIDE.device. So we're going to do this. And I'm going to show you how you change that. So if I go to install 314, run HD tools, you'll have HD toolbox. Icon information. There's a line that says SCSI underscore device underscore name. You'll see mine says GVP SCSI dot device. I'm going to change this to what I was recommended to over here on the window to LIDE dot device. There we go. All right, we'll say save. And now, when I run HD Toolbox, it should detect that card. LIDE, there it is. I just saw the light light up. Cool. Change drive type. Remember, it was a, what, 32 gig Samsung? Redefinitions, 30 gig SC to F adapter. Fine. I'm going to call this. It's just for your own reference, okay? Put a RAM in front of this. There we go. Okay, that way it saves it to RAM. The Olga Fat Dick. Okay, just for partitioning purposes. Partition drive. Now, like any Amiga, you have to be sub 4. I'll do 3. Olga DH0. Nope, we're going to call it DH0 Advanced Options. 300 buffers because we got memory. Change file system. Up my block size. 2048. I don't care. It's a 3 gig partition. I just want the blocks. OK. And then, new partition, click the big dog, 27 gig. Do I need that much? It's going to take forever to validate if I do. DH1. Or let's do this. Not bootable. Change again. Whoa. 4096 
block size. I said buffers because I'm stupid. Uh, so Big Dick's got 300 buffers and a block size of 4K. Save change to drive. Quit. 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 Now, I can reboot this and I'll have to boot off of this floppy again. We're going to format them like a normal Amiga disc, except it is a compact flash card. So always remember to quit format. We have 26.9 gig. You do need a 314 or greater ROM to use large partitions. That's that. Now I'm going to base install this. And then we're going to test out NVMe and the hard drives. So as you can see, 314 is installed, but it doesn't have any CPU libraries. So I'm going to cheat. And I'm going to put in... 3.2, and I'm going to load its MMU libs disk. Now I'm going to reboot. This is with 3.1.4. Mm. Booted. Backdrop. Big dick. Zero. System. Zero percent full. There's nothing on here. Whoopity doo da. Let's get some benchmarks. Sysinfo. We are 68030 at 882. This is jumper for 50 megahertz. Let's hit the speed button and see what... Now it's not a vampire. It's not Pi Mega. It's no 30. 101 or 10,123 drives per second. 10.56 MIPS and 1.40 million floating point operations per second. 1.16 chip speed A600. 51.8 megahertz. In. Memory. 128 meg. 32 bit RAM. Remember, this is an Amiga 2000. 1 mega chip. Your mom. Uh awesome freaking sauce get out of the shower you always give it a tug Boop. make yourself feel better look how long she is all right i cash i burst d cash we don't have copy back no big deal it's no 30 moda freaking rolling runs really sweet beautiful display now what we're going to do is i'm going to turn this off and I'm going to turn off the switch that is the O30 and turn this back on. It will load off of the stock 68000, but hopefully with that card. We'll see. Yes, it's booting the compact flash card in 68000 mode. We're going to run the same sysinfo. see the big difference in speed okay so system scroll over Woo. sys info memory 4 meg of fast so the 68,000 mode really knocks you in the cheese guess because it can't address it because it doesn't have a 32-bit processor 8 is your max so we got 4 megs of RAM 1 mega chip so that really knocks you into compatibility land hit the speed Stock 68,000 with no hair on her chin. Oh yeah, 1.0 flat, 712, 0.7, and nothing. So, that is a good compatibility for a games device, if you really need the games. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. This is not hot swappable, so you cannot flick this back on. Why? While you're on, so don't do that. It would be bad. All right, important safety tip. Thanks, E. Uh, this is serial number 12. 12. It's pretty good. It's in gold. It comes in four flavors from mild to wild. Prices start at 200 euros and work their way up. You can get it with or without CPU, with or without a lot of RAM, 64 megs or 128. Having the pimped out version, I figured, why not? You're going to go balls to the wall anyway. But, with all of these ports, there is one small issue. You can't use all of them at the same time. There's an issue with Compact Flash and other devices that it can't do master-slave. So if you're on a Compact Flash card, you can't have an NVMe in the pipe as a secondary disc. It's just not going to work because it doesn't play the old master-slave game very well. There's no jumpers for Compact Flash cards to have them. Some of them do. This one does not. The one I just pulled out does allow you to do Master Slave on jumpers. Reading a note that I got on the message, it says, Well, uh, you might ask, why do you have all of these modules if you can't use several devices simultaneously? To which they replied, it's because IDE and Compact Flash especially started to disappear. 
more modern technologies became cheaper, so we decided to add the possibility to use as much media and turn Olga into a Swiss knife. Second, about using several devices at once, it's the same as before. Some compact flashcards don't allow you to use any other devices impaired. They don't tolerate master-slave settings and nothing works as a second device as soon as a second device is added. A good example is the Prospect compact flashcard shown in the picture where it has a double. What about compact flashcards that accept Master Slave? And the LIDE boot ROM makes it possible. We'll use it. Negative story. All devices need to be connected to the adapter. That means you can insert a compact flashcard in the rear and a CD-ROM through this adapter. Both devices need to connect to it. So yeah, there's options for people who really need this option. Here's something that can help. So apparently, if you're running IDE, you got to run your IDE on it, like my dude. Even if it's compact flash, it's fine. Plug this into the 40, which we'll try. We're going to do that. Let's do that. This 4 gig was my original card. I'm going to plug this into its keyed. This needs bus power, so I'm going to split it. I have a P8, or a P8, P6, P7, which is a Berg splitter here. Let's see what happens with this using IDE. Maybe my hard drive light will actually work. Yeah, I saw the blip, and it's booting. And my hard drive light does function. So, there it is. So there we go. Uh, that's using my card on the IDE internal, which still does the same thing. Oh, I can't lay this down. i got to hold it. All right, so we're going to do a speed test on this disc holding in my hand. DH0 speed. 6.5 meg per second, 300 buffers, L-I-D-E dot device. You can see right there and the nice name that I gave her. Uh. So I could use my same adapter. I could just put it right back where it was and everything's cool. But why? Why would I do that? I paid all this money for this card. Stuck in low, it will not go. So it doesn't like M key devices. It's probably going to be old B key. It says M.2 SATA. 6 gig per second SATA 3. Maybe it's got to be crappy old little tiny dudes, but why is the screw down so far? Dicky Olga is actually a North German woman. You don't want to meet in your life. She's a big, powerful, uncompromising, and unrepentant. Just like this card is. 68030 or EC030, 25 through 60 megahertz, 881 or 882 at 60. Uh, runs asynchronous with its own oscillator. Has map ROM, Kickstart 1.3 not supported, 64 or 128 megs of RAM, LIDE boot ROM from Matt Harlem, IDE 40, 44, that's what it is, B key, SATA, and M2 B key. So I don't have a B key, I have an M key, that's why that's not going to work, so B key, big shelf B key drive, and they're super cheap, eBay, you can get the little tiny ones, we don't need a lot for Amiga. Default speed is 7 to 8 megs, you can... Uh, tweak the weight states to get 11 with map ROM, 2 clock ports, 1 fast clock port, 1 standard 1200 clock port, 68,000 fallback mode, CPU, IDE, 4 megs of fast RAM, which we found out when you flipped the little switch. Hard drive and the Delphina sound card fittings on the back side. Oh crap, right here. 1, 2, 3, 4. Neat! And a 2.5 inch hard drive you can mount right there. Or M2 SSD. I get the idea of all the connections, and I appreciate it. I just don't have the right parts. So I'm going to plug in a SATA cable. We're going to test that thing out. PNY, I don't know. Uh, power splitter is going to be this to the, the, the thingy. We're going to boot install 3.2 off of the drive. It's loading already. And we'll do right in the I. And we'll change this to LIDE. Dot device, save it. This is 314 ROM running 32. Do we see it? Oh, we do. Change drive type, define new. I'm going to say control X RAM colon SSD whatever. Read configuration, okay. PNY 446 gigs. Holy crap. Do it. <laughs> Incredible. Holy crap. Partition drive. Woo! You gotta be kidding me. Delete. Roller down. I can't even get it that small. Alright. The smallest I can go is 3592. 
so we'll call it DH0, advanced options, change, uh, 4K, fine, OK. I have never had a big partition this big, so we're going to go new, oops, new click, 439 gigs. You think it can do it? 439 GB. Just change that to, we're going to do 16K, what can we do? 32K clusters we're going to have to do because that is massive. Okay, save so change the drive, exit, we're going to reboot, so we know system's going to format, right? That's a 3 gig, so we'll call it system, trash can, everything else, quick format, yep, yep, done. Will this MOF format, it's the largest cluster size we can do, 439GB, holy crap, quick format, format, go. It's for, oh my god, it formatted. 438 gigabytes free. I'm not used to seeing that kind of size on the Amiga. Incredible. So that works. SATA works. This works on IDE. We're going to try the 2.5. All right. Oh, Omnibot's battery died. Toshiba, 60 gig. Let's do a change drive type. Define new. RAM, control X, RAM, your mom, read configuration, 56 gig Toshiba is what this one is. The trick to this is why do I put RAM colon? Because you ever go and when you say okay, you look at your drive and you have every disk you've ever owned and it's like you got to delete old and it's a pain in the butt. When you put it in RAM, when you put it in RAM, it saves it RAM and it doesn't fill this up, it's empty each time. So that way you can play, whatever, 3198, DH0 bootable, advanced options, change, 4K cluster, fine, 300 buffers because I have RAM, new partition, click the big dog, 300 buffers again, uh, 53 gigabyte, I don't care. Uh, okay, save change to drive, yep, exit. Okay, reboot. So it's got to reboot. So here's the here's the manual. Awesome. Open file. Hey, there we go. We got a manual. So there we go. 2.5 inch hard drive works. SATA hard drive works. Compact flash in the rear slot works. Compact flash on the 3.5 works. So I could double up, have an IDE hard drive like one of these, and slap it to a CD-ROM. LIDE dot device unit one would be that. You can put dual MOFs on there. You got a full clock port, a 1200 clock port. What an incredible card for your 2000. It's a great all in one. It's not as easy 9000 with Super RAM and USB and all that stuff, but it's not meant to be. It's expensive as hell because it's a custom built card by a group of people who are really enthusiasts and really know their stuff. It's not one hard drive like to roll them all like this document says, it's just, so that's something new. So this is an older documentation for the card that I have. I just put my compact flash card in there. I have no hard drive light on the compact flash solution, which kind of sucks. They put the card that I built in there. So I have to, you got to start with blank media. That's the stinker. Blank media. And I have to figure out the stupid hard drives. HDD2 Channel 2 Okay, Channel 2 it is. It's just dim. See how it's dim? My blind ass just couldn't see it. Show config. We have 030, 882, 030 MMU, ECS, NCSC Agnes, Normal Denise, uh, 1 meg. Kickstart 314, so 314. Uh, workbench 314, unidentified board because I don't have a boards library, 128 mega RAM, and the ROM, and an Ethernet card, 2065 Ethernet. Thought it was an Ariana Grande. Very nice. RGB to HDMI, Amiga 6830, perfect machine. Now I have a flip switch. I'm going to load this up, 30 gigs. I'll rename it. It was just for the video. It's a funny. The Dickie Olga card, whether it's a mean German woman 
or a, a, a funny drive name. On that note, this card, while expensive as hell, in the Pimp Edition, is really cool because of the features it offers. Who has a SATA port on their Amiga 2000? This guy, clock ports. And I, I don't know what the other things are. i got to read the book. We're going to read the manual here and see what all these things are. There's a lot of stuff. So it says 60 megahertz is not officially supported because there are no native 60 megahertz 030s. A lot of them can run stable, but they don't want to take any responsibility for damage. So they leave them at 50, which they run fine at because there's 50 megahertz 030s all day long. If you want to get the boot ROM thing, take a picture of this code. It'll take you to this web address if my camera doesn't suck eggs. And I'll link it in the description below. That'll do the map ROM. You put it in C. And that'll speed her up even more. Some awesome work. As always, you guys rock it over there. Thank you guys for keeping the Amiga alive. If you are interested in spending a ton of money or a little bit of money for the half-powered jobber, same CPU, a little less RAM, if you don't need 120 megs of RAM, uh, you can get one of those too. I'll link everything in the description below so there's no special deals or magic. I did pay for this with my own money and I wanted to pimp out my Amiga 2000 or one of my Amiga 2000s with something other than my original 8 meg 68,000 stockness to have a little bit more fun. So that's all I got. Thank you guys for coming along on this journey. Until next time, thanks for watching and I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.